we have the hip cover and the fabric in the low. And we go for our cross body grip. We start a slow hip drag. He starts peeling away from that. As he does that, I follow him and I bring my knee between his elbow and knee. My hand on his hand, my foot over my own hand. We rake it back just like we did before. We go into the lapel, parallel to the mat. Now I pull the two grips towards his belly button and I put his head on the ground and my head on the ground. So let's give this a shot. Let's just do it from the turtle position. Okay, hands up, three, two. Placing my hand here. I'm trying to stop a very specific movement from him. What I'm trying to do is stop him from scissoring his legs away or towards me. I don't really think he's just gonna sit on his hip. We've seen that that's what the hip drag is. I'm gonna do that. He's gonna come down to his hip only to scissor his legs in one direction or the other. Now, just so we're, just so we're getting more aware of what the problems against turtling, we're here, if, uh, go back to the If there's no thigh part here, I'm going to move my head away and my feet away and bring my knee towards him. And then we can start developing our guard position. So we sit back towards guard. So that's if he, I'm allowed to move away from him and scissor my legs. But if I can move towards him, then we can also roll back to guard and recover. So with that all said, we get to our hip cover. We have our thigh pry in. We're trying to straighten out our arm with our fist against the floor. So that if he tried to trap my arm and scissor and move me around, it's not gonna happen. If he comes up to referees from here and he wants to run forward and escape with him, boom, like that, then we go double thigh pry. So we're here, he goes to get up, we go double thigh pry. And I put my shoulder under his armpit and I run his head forward. So he has to keep his hands on the ground. Then we can develop our seatbelt, things like this. So I bring this up to mention we're only doing one method for taking someone from a closed turtle to an open turtle today. But there are a lot of ways to do it. One of them would be a double thigh pry. I just want you to be thinking about this idea overall of open turtle versus closed turtle. This is one way of dealing with it, one way it occurs, but there are a lot of others. So from the hip cover, now he realizes I'm gonna develop my cross body grip and I'm gonna start dragging him down to the floor. So in anticipation of this, he puts his left hand out wide and he moves his head that way. You're not gonna see this a lot because it's actually a big mistake for him. What he's feeling is, okay, this guy wants to rip me down to the floor here. He wants to pull me in this direction. So Sean's thinking, well, if I resist and move to the northwest there, maybe I can stop. So as I feel that happen, right, I'm gonna bring my knee to the same spot it was in before, between his elbow and knee. I'm gonna place my hand over his hand, place my foot over my own hand, and rake his leg back, rake the leg, uh, arm back again. I put my thumb in his collar. I'm looking for a grip where my forearm is parallel to the mat. It doesn't need to be a high grip, just parallel to the mat. Now I put my forehead past his elbow, and I pull everything towards his belly button. <coughs> we have the hip cover and the fiber in the low. And we go for our cross body grip. We start a slow hip drag. He starts peeling away from that. As he does that, I follow him and I bring my knee between his elbow and knee. My hand on his hand, my foot over my own hand. We rake it back just like we did before. We go into the lapel, parallel to the mat. Now I pull the two grips towards his belly button and I put his head on the ground and my head on the ground. So let's give this a shot. Let's just do it from the turtle position. Okay, hands up, three, two.